Mom also plays musical instruments. She has learned to run and skip and swim just like a, a sighted person. Som is a capable and intelligent young woman. She now has the training and confidence to make the best of her abilities. Thanks to the Father A School for the Blind, she is a girl with a future, not a girl with a disability. Father Larry, what happens to these children after graduation? Tom, that has always been a problem for blind children and blind people in general. Uh, unemployment is very high, even uh, throughout the world. When our students graduate from here, usually they go into massage or into uh, selling lottery tickets. But with the use of computers and especially the, the new pro software of voice recognition and uh, English, Thai, whatever language you want to use, we hope to develop some trades that they'll be able to lead a fruitful life in. And the teaching here is also necessary. Helen, you asked earlier about our children when they grow up. What happens to them? Well, we, we treat them just like in a normal family. That when, they, when they, they grow up, they're educated, and when they're ready, they move on. They get a job, and uh, they, always, they can come back and visit us. It's just like a normal family. I've asked Ning to join us today and share with us her life and what happened after she grew up. Good morning, Father. Good Tom and Good Helen. My name is Ning. Father Ray took me in with my older sister and younger twin brother when my mother passed away. I was nine years old and we have very little schooling in that time. My sister Yai and I were able to graduate from the university. Me from Bangkok University and Yai from Assumption University. Today I have a wonderful job as an event manager at the Royal Kibbit Resort. Now I have a family with a husband and lovely daughter Kate. Like many thousands of others, we owe our life to Father Ray. Thank you for your nice visit. Thank you, Kuning, and thank you, Nung Kate. Let's stop in to see Brother Dennis Gervais, our treasurer. He will tell us about his coming to us and his functions, including the sponsorship programs. The first time I met Father Brennan, it was in 1991. I was in Pattaya on a golf holiday, and um, he showed me all the works he had at the time, and I was very impressed. When I asked him where he was getting the funds to support all that work, he told me it was through donations. A year later, I decided to take early retirement and come and help Father Ray. I thought that with my degree in accounting and also 27 years of experience as a systems engineer, I would be of some use to him. As I look at the last 17 years, a lot of things have been done. Lots, thousands of lives have been changed for the better. Now, this would have been very difficult without the sponsorship program, which brings regular flow of income for us. The sponsorship program has a direct impact on the number of students and children that we can take in as residents. The sponsorship program is establishing a relationship between a child and a sponsor. And the sponsor actually will uh, send uh, money covering the sponsorship either on a monthly, quarterly, or annual basis. The cost of a sponsorship is the average between the cost of a child that is two, three years old or whether he's a 21-year-old going to university. So we have to average it out. And uh, this amounts to approximately 2,500 U.S. dollars per year. However, we are very grateful for all our sponsors. If they can send us only a few dollars a month, or, or they can send us the full sponsorship, we will be very, very happy. For the last six, seven years, the Thai government has started helping our work. Last year, their contribution represented about 12% of our income, which is quite significant. We have been very fortunate that Baron Ricardo Carini established the Thai Children's Trust back in the mid-80s in the United Kingdom. They have, since that time, represented about 40% of our income. For the rest of our income, we have to look to foreign governments. 
organizations and other individuals. As we look at our expenses, the costs have increased significantly over the last few years. In order to help to control our expenses, we have established a central purchasing division. To tell you more about it, I would like to introduce Laksamapa, who is the director of that division. Laksamapa was raised and educated by Father Ray and graduated from Assumption University with a master's degree in administration. Here, our center of purchasing and warehouse, from here we ship fresh food, water and ice every day to every project. We buy everything in large quantity. As the product arrives, we store that on the shelves and we have a walk-in refrigerator and freezer for fresh food. Project order what they require and then we deliver to them every day for the fresh food and on a weekly basis for office supplies and household goods. We cannot drink the water from the tap here in Thailand. An excellent water purification system was donated to us. By making our own drinking water and ice, we have saved this year only over 400,000 baht, which is the equivalent of about 12,000 US dollars. We are growing our own vegetables and fruits at our farm. And uh, the farm also has ponds where we are growing fish. The farm is close to the central purchasing. This contributes to a large savings for us as we are feeding over a thousand people every day. Hi Luke, this looks like to be an enormous job. Can you tell us how you manage this? We have well trained staff and tracking of all products is in our computer system. We know exactly the status of each product for our stock and how much we use. Luke, thanks for the insight. It was great. Volunteering here, what a fabulous idea. Actually, the volunteers come from all over the world, especially from Denmark. At any given time, we have 15 to 20 volunteers with us. They spend their time with us teaching the children and minding now the smaller ones. And one very important job is that they act as guides taking our visitors to see our various projects. The volunteers share their many talents with us and for themselves they go away with a life-changing experience. They pay their own way over here. We provide them with food and lodging, something that other charities do not do. As Brother Dennis said earlier, the government does help us with some of our funds. But by far the majority of our money comes from outside of Thailand. Having sufficient money to operate is always a major concern. It requires an awful lot of time on my part and everyone on my staff. We need the participation of everyone. Helen and Tom, it has indeed been a pleasure having you visit us. And as with our other visitors, all visitors, we hope that you will come back again. Okay, well, it's been an unforgettable experience to see what you have done and what your staff has done here. Without the Father Ray Foundation, I shudder to think where many of these young people might be. There you have it, the wonderful legacy of Father Ray. A living legacy that continues to grow and help the less fortunate and abandoned. I invite you to be part of that living testimony to a great man and help us continue helping children without a family, street children, blind children, and young adults with disabilities. Come to visit the Father Ray Foundation in Pattaya or contact us through our website. I hope you will consider sponsoring a child.